friends welcome to my channel so in the today's lecture we are going to discuss one more example of finding the candidate key okay in the last video we have already discussed one example of candidate key now i am showing you one more example of finding the candidate key so that you can get better understanding okay so let's suppose we have a relation okay we have five attributes a b c d and e okay so what i am doing i am designing my database and i am making one table in my database and what are the attributes of my table these five attributes a b c d and e okay now what i want to do i want to find the candidate key of my table okay so before finding the candidate key of the table first of all i would try to determine the functional dependencies of these five attributes by looking at the type of attribute okay so let's suppose we have these functional dependencies a to b we have b to c we have c to d and we have d to a okay so i just assumed these functional dependencies okay i am just assuming that these functional dependencies exist okay so now what i will do with the help of these functional dependencies i would try to find the candidate key of my relation okay so let me show you one thing let's suppose i have three attributes in my table a b and c okay 1 2 1 and 4 okay so now what i am saying i am saying that there is a functional dependency from a to b what does it mean it means for any value of a i am able to get the one unique value of b okay if i say please tell me the value of b if the value of a is 1 what you would say the value of b is 2 okay for value of a 1 what is the value of b 2 for value of a 2 the value of b is 3 okay so a there is a functional dependency from a to b for each and every value of a i am able to get one particular value of b okay now what i am saying there is a functional dependency from b to c there is a functional dependency from b to c what does it mean it means that for given for any value of b we are able to get the one particular unique value of c okay the value of b is 2 tell me the value of c okay there is a functional dependency okay what does functional dependency means if the value of b is 2 we would get one definite value of c so in both the cases we would be having 3 okay you can't write here 3 and 4 then this functional dependency would be wrong to make it functional dependency what we have to do we have to write here 3 okay so from a to b we have this functional dependency okay and from b to c each and every value of b you would be getting one unique value of c okay just try to understand these two functional dependencies for each and every value 
value of a you would get one unique value and for each value of b you would get one unique value of c okay so obviously from a for each and every value of a you would be getting the unique value of c okay if we have a to b okay this functional dependency is right there is a functional dependency from a to b if you are given any value of a you can uniquely determine value of b okay alone a is enough to determine the value of b and any number of attributes you add to it like this any attributes you would be adding to a it also would be determining the b okay because alone a is enough any kind of additional information if you add to a you can also determine the value of b okay so i hope that you are clear with it okay what is functional dependency means functional dependency mean if we have a functional dependency from a to b for every value of a we are getting one value of b okay and for every value of b we are getting one value of c okay so i hope that now you understand functional dependency in better way okay now let's try to find the candidate key of this relation okay so in the last example we already discussed how we can find out the candidate key okay and what is the meaning of candidate key with the help of candidate key you are able to determine all attributes of the relation okay with the help of candidate key we are able to determine all of the attributes of the relation okay so firstly check the right hand side b c d and a so how many total attributes we have in relation 5 a b c d and e okay so if you look at e is not present at the right hand side okay so what does it mean you pick any of the attribute you would ne never be able to determine the attribute e and the purpose of the candidate key is it should determine all of the attributes okay but you don't see attribute in the right hand side so what we have to do now we have to include this e attribute in the candidate key okay we have to include this e attribute into the candidate key firstly check if just with the help of only e attribute we are able to determine all the other attributes let's try to check if e can be the candidate key of our relation find the closer of this attribute okay so if you look at with the help of e you are not able to determine any of the attribute okay because e is not present in any of the functional dependencies at the left hand side so you are not able to determine any of the attribute just with only e attribute okay so now what we have to do let's try to add some another attribute with e attribute okay so i am adding attribute a with attribute e now let's check if we can determine all the other attributes if we use a e as the candidate key okay so if we have ae okay so we definitely can get the value of ae okay so if you look at this functional dependency so alone a is enough to find the value of b so you add any number of attribute to this attribute there is not going to be any effect 
Okay, addition of any attribute to this attribute will have no effect. Okay, so with the help of a loan A, we are determining B. So definitely with A, we would be definitely determining B. Okay, so if you look at with the help of AE, you are able to determine the unique value of B. Okay, and if you are given value of B, you are able to uniquely determine value of C. Okay, so definitely with the help of AE, you will definitely uniquely determine the value of C. Okay, with the help of AE, we can also determine the value of C. If you look at with the help of A, we are able to determine the value of C. And if I give you any value of C, you are finding the value of D. Okay, so obviously with the help of A, we would definitely would be determining the value of D. Okay, so if you look at it with the help of A, okay, if I Take composite attribute AE. With the help of it, I am able to uniquely determine all the other attributes. Okay? So if I want to search the value of any attribute like C, D, B, I just need to give the value of A and E. Okay? Just by giving the value of A and E, I can fetch the value of any other attribute. Okay, so you can consider AE as your candidate key. Okay, now let's try to find some more candidate key. It is not that we would only have one candidate key in our relation. There might be many number of candidate keys. Okay. So, the attribute E should definitely be included in the candidate key because it is not present at the right hand side. Okay, so we should have to include it into the candidate key. Now let's take B. Add B attribute as additional attribute to E. Okay, now let's try to check what are the various attributes your B E can determine. So firstly, with the help of BE, we are able to determine attributes B and E. Okay. So if you look at this functional dependency, with the help of B, I am able to determine C. Okay. So adding any number of attributes to this attributes would not have any effect. Okay. So, alone B is enough to determine the C. So, definitely with the help of B, E, we would be able to determine attribute C. Okay? So, if you look at, with the help of B, E, I am able to determine attribute C. Okay? And if I give any value of C, I am able to determine the value of D. Okay, so definitely with the help of BE, I am able to determine the value of attribute D. Okay, so if you look at BE is able to determine the value of D. Okay, and D is able to determine the value of A uniquely. So definitely with the help of BA, we are able to determine the value of A. So in this case also, with the help of BE attribute, I am able to find the value of all of the other attributes. If I give you value of BE, you can uniquely determine the value of A, C and B. Okay, any of the attributes you can determine. Just with the help of BE attribute. So BE is also going to be your candidate key.
Okay. Now let's try to find some more candidate keys. If we have CE. So with the help of CE, we are able to firstly determine CE. Okay. And if you look at C to B, if I give you value of C, you can determine value of D. Okay. So alone C is enough to determine the value of D. So obviously with the help of CE, we would be determining the value of D. So now if you look at this, if I give you any value of CE, okay, if I give you any value of CE, you will get one value of D. Okay, if I give any value of D, I am able to get the value of A. Okay, so obviously for each and every value of CE, we would definitely be getting only one value of A. So C is also able to uniquely determine value of A. Okay. So now if you look at this functional dependency C E to A. If I give you any value of C and E. I am able to uniquely get the value of A. Okay. If I give you any value of A. I am able to uniquely get the value of B. Okay. So definitely with the help of CE, I am able to determine the value of B. Like this. So in this case also, we can consider CE as a candidate key. Okay. So with the help of CE, I am able to uniquely determine all of the other attributes. So CE is also your candidate key. Now DE. Let's check if you can use DE as your candidate key. Okay. So DE. Okay. If you will be finding the closure of DE. So definitely DE. Okay. The closure of DE would definitely be firstly DE. So if you look at this functional dependency. If I give you the value of D. I can get the value of A. Okay. So any kind of additional attribute to D attribute would not have any effect. So you add any number of extra attributes to D. You would definitely be able to determine the value of A. Okay. So now if you look at with the help of D I am able to get the value of A. I give you any value of D E. You would give me one value of A. Okay. And for that one value of A, we would be getting only one value of B. Okay. So D E is definitely going to determine the value of D. Okay. So if you look at D E to B. If I give you any value of D E, you would give me one value of B. Okay. And for that value of B, I would be getting only one value of C. Okay. So definitely with the help of D E also I am able to determine C. So in this case, we can also consider D E as the candidate key. Because with the help of it, I am able to uniquely determine all of the other attributes. I give you value of D. You can give me the value of any of the other attributes. Okay. So how many candidates key we have? A E, B E, C E and D E. So these four are actually minimal keys. These four are actually your minimal keys. You know, you can't delete any of the attribute from these keys. This is minimal. This is minimal. All these four are actually minimal keys.
Okay, you can't make like this. A B E. If I write A B E, A B E is not actually the minimal key. You can say it as the super key. Why it is not the minimal key? It is not minimal key because if you delete any attribute, like if you delete attribute A, you can. Use B E as the key. Okay, when it could be minimal key, when you cannot delete any of the attribute from it. If I delete either A attribute or B attribute from this key, still you would be able to determine all of the other attributes. Okay, so A B E is not your candidate key, but it is your super key. In this case, we have just four candidate keys present: A, E, B, E, C, E, and D, E. Even you cannot use C, D, E as your candidate key. It is your super key. It is not a candidate key. If you delete any attribute from this key, either you delete C or you delete D attribute. Okay, so. In that case, you can still, no, determine the other attributes. So C D E is actually your super key. It is not your candidate key. When we call any key is the candidate key, when it is minimal, you can't delete any of the attribute from this key. Okay, like these cases, like these four cases. Okay, so. I hope that you are clear with this example. Thank you so much for watching my video. If you like my video, please like, share, and subscribe my channel. If you have any doubt or question, I have mentioned my email ID in the description box. You can contact me on that email ID.